Hey everybody, how you guys doing today? Working on Buckins McCullough Pro Mac 850. Uh, we got our porting done. This is a step that I, I want you guys to not skip ever when you're building power saws. Um, I have my porting done, my cylinder is finished. Um, for now, we are going to go a little bit farther on this saw. Maybe I'm going incrementally um, to make sure. Basically, the ins and outs, friends, is Max are a different animal. They have the transfers that swirl. We're going to take this saw apart and I'm going to show you again how the Max system works. Um, I really want to get into these and show you guys what I'm doing. I have to take this cylinder off. I'm going to take it in the house and I'm going to scrub and wash the whole cylinder with soapy water uh, in the sink. Um, that's a very important step. You want to wash a ported cylinder or any cylinder. I do this with all cylinders I install. Um, you want to get any honing debris and, and dirt out of the cylinder. I want to put this thing together clean and shiny. Um, I'm going to show you guys my timing wheel set up again. Again, I just got to get the oil line out of the way. You guys ask about timing wheels and, and how to set them up. Okay, it's just a drill chuck. Most drill chucks are threaded where they go into the drill. That is just the shaft off of the drill chuck and I ground two slots on it for a 3 8 wrench. Okay. So that's the deal there. We got to take the timing wheel off. We're going to break the cylinder down. I'm going to tell you guys what we ended up with and what I did to this saw because I want you guys, I want you guys to understand what I'm going for here. Okay. Um, so as I take this apart, let's go over the timing numbers. Uh, I've already checked the timing on this saw. Just got to grab a wrench here, friends. Okay, I'm going to take my pointer off. I've already retimed this saw. Now, I did something completely different. I talked to a lot of you guys out there about porting Max. There's a lot of guys that port Max. And everybody seems to have their own little moves that they use. But what, what I'm getting with Max, and not to say anybody's right or wrong, is there's so many different ways to port a Mac. So what I'm doing is I'm going through this information and going, okay, yeah, I understand. And what I'm trying to do, friends, is get timing numbers around porting max. Um, it's all about the timing. Because if you don't time the saw, and I've said this many times, and it's just my opinion, if you don't time your saws, okay, there's no way to recreate your work. Because, especially on these old saws, Max, when you time a Mac, they're all over the map. The squish is different. When you time a Mac, um, the timing numbers are all over the map. Okay? And if you start... Let's talk about this, friends. Let's talk about this. This saw has 30,000 squish out of the box. Pretty good for a Mac. Okay? Uh, a lot of these, I've had a few buddies give me squish measurements. They're anywhere from 30,000 to 60,000. The more squish you have, right? And that's the measurement between the top of the piston and the squish band, which is that ring, and then you have your combustion chamber. That dictates how much compression you're going to have. If you have higher squish, typically you're going to have lower compression. If you have lower compression, you don't want to raise your exhaust too high. You guys following me here? Now, if I didn't measure everything and I didn't get a timing wheel, I would have no way of knowing exactly what I'm starting with. Which means I could port this saw, I could port three of these in a row, and if they all have different timing numbers to start with, and they all have different squish, they're all going to run different. Um... That's why it's so important to hook up a timing wheel. Yeah, it takes time, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then write it down in your porting book. Here's my porting book right here with my Wolf Creek pen. Okay. 
Again, friends, sorry, squish is 35,000. See right there, I misremembered the squish. It's important to write it down. Squish is 35,000 on this saw stock. The exhaust opened at 104 after top dead center. That's 152 duration. My transfers opened at 114. Stock, this saw has 10 degrees of blowdown. Um, the more blowdown you have, and I'm gonna do a video. Um, hold me to this, friends. I'm gonna do a video, bore and stroke, what it means, and I wanna get into more detailed uh, ideas about two-stroke theory, okay? If you have short blowdown, think about it, friends, your piston is moving down, okay? Your piston is moving down. When your piston is moving down, it is compressing the intake charge, right? The minute, the minute that piston clears the intake, it is compression, compressing the charge. The sooner the transfers open, the less time the piston has to compress the bottom end. It only compresses the bottom end when the intake and the transfers are sealed. If you open the transfers too soon, you get less pressure and less fuel and air coming out. You also are giving the saw less time for the exhaust to come out, okay? Now these max, the exhaust pipe is about this short out of the box. This air comes out and it's hitting a wall, okay? If it hits a wall, it'll scavenge sooner, right? Well, think about it. You haven't gotten all your exhaust out of the combustion chamber and you're already opening your transfers. If your exhaust pressure exceeds, right? If your combustion chamber pressure exceeds your transfer pressure, which one's going to win? Your exhaust pressure is going to win. It's not going to allow the transfers to flow. With 10 degrees of blowdown, running this saw, I noted, uh, when you bury it in larger wood, it tends to go a little hot and a little lean. Um, that, to me, is short blowdown. I don't like short blowdown saws. They feel really zippy um, because you're getting the cycle started sooner, okay, when you, uh, when you raise transfers to a point, right? Um, everybody has their idea of how much blowdown is the right number. I like more, okay? 10 degrees, I think this saw is fighting itself. Now, how could we fix that? We could deck it. I could put this in my lathe, I could cut the base of the cylinder here, and I could recut these bearing pockets. I'm not gonna do that on this saw. I did that on Bucken Super Pro 70. Um, I gained compression, squish, uh, I lowered my exhaust port substantially, and I lowered the intake port. So, I'm not going to do that on this saw, because this saw has really good squish out of the box. 35 thou is not terrible for a saw this size. Okay? So, now you guys are getting what I'm working with here. This is my thought process around this saw. Now, what did I do? Factory, there is a lip around the periphery of this exhaust port. The exhaust is also shifted to the this side. The pipe goes this way and out. I did not change the exhaust port shape. I left it. I left it to the left. There's a lip around the whole exhaust port. I got rid of the lip in this. I've heard guys, the old timers that have been doing this forever, say they take the lip out. So I thought, okay, how many degrees is that? Well, a lot of the guys that ported back in the day didn't use a timing wheel. I cut that lip out. I got five degrees of timing on the exhaust out of that. Okay, the exhaust is now at 99, okay? Now, what does that mean? I have lowered the compression in this saw a little bit, okay? But I have gained blowdown. 10 degrees of blowdown, if the exhaust is at 104 and the transfers are at 114, the degrees of separation is my blowdown. That is 10 degrees, okay? If we've raised the exhaust five degrees, I now have 15 degrees of blowdown. That is still short, but that's better than 10. Now, the other thing I did, I added a little bit of intake timing to this saw. This cylinder had a small chip at the bottom of the intake. I wanted to remove that. Well, when I did, 
I ended up with, that was four degrees of timing by the time we blended the chip out. Stock, my intake was 122 degrees of duration. It is now at 130. We added four degrees of timing, which is eight degrees of duration, right? It opens four degrees sooner and it closes four degrees later. So it's open for eight degrees longer. Okay, friends? So that's what's going on with this saw. Now, I'm gonna take the cylinder off right now. I'm not sure if I torque these down. I did. I'm gonna take the cylinder off right now. Let's talk about the transfers on this saw. Um, I know I showed you guys in the last video, there's a lot of interest in it. Let's work on these backs together and figure out what makes them tick. And then we'll send this back to Bucken when we think we got it right. And he's gonna tell me whether I did or not. Um, I, I mean, every saw I build, I'm going to be inclined to think it's wicked, but <laughs> that's not, friends, if you want to know how your saws run, you got to send them to, uh, or, you know, send them or lend them or give them, uh, to a guy who lives on a power saw, somebody that's been doing it a long time. And, uh, they'll tell you if you, if your saws are any good. And if a guy cuts every day and he's running your saw, he's going to wear it out quickly or not. You'll know if your saws run or not. Um, that's the key here. I want to know how long my saws last, and I want to know if uh, if they cut the mustard. You know, if they got if they got the go and the longevity. I could build my saws hotter, but they're not going to last, right? You're gonna have to. You're gonna start having piston failures. Um, if you guys have ever seen a catastrophic piston failure, they absolutely grenade. You'll, or you'll take the top off of it. Um, we don't want that, right? So that's why I'm not really interested in racing saws or any of that stuff. Saw racing is cool, don't get me wrong. I'd like to build a hot saw one day, but uh, I build work saws. So the key is how hot, hot, or how hot can we turn them up? And then how long do they last once we do that? Okay, take the bottom end assembly out. Again, I'm getting used to these max. Now, we have to, we have to clean this out. I wanna show you guys something here. For those of you who've never been inside a back, this bearing is pinned. This is a roller bearing, very strong, very good. We have to clean this all apart, okay? And then we have this side right here, okay? We need to clean that all out and, and make it shiny. Also, I need to clean down in here. I have to silicone these bolts. If you don't seal these up, factory, there was like rubber O-rings, which are pretty much never present anymore. If you don't seal this up good there, uh, you will pull oil into your crankcase and the saw will be smoky and run poorly. I've had a lot of emails about Max that do that. That's what it is usually. Now again, friends, I am not... I'm not a Mac expert. I am far from it. I'm learning and growing just like a lot of you guys are. I don't know everything. Okay. Now I want to wash this cylinder real good. Now, if you look at the transfers in a Mac, they are twisted. Their idea was to twist and get the airflow moving. Okay. You guys see what I did here? See that texturing in there? I'm gonna leave that because I I have no problems with rough surfaces. Again, just my theory. Okay, now what I did, I am feeding these almost directly from the case with more bias to the primary transfer versus the secondary. In my opinion, you always wanna feed the primary more than the secondary. Okay, friends, I'm going to go in the house and I'm going to scrub this cylinder real good. Okay, I cleaned the carbon out of the combustion chamber. I'm going to shine this real good. We need to put this thing back together. I'm going to put the top end on. Um, we are not going to put this saw together 100% today because I'm going to build another pipe for this saw. Uh, we're going to do a pipe making video. Anyways, friends, I'm going to go in the house and spit shine this in my wife's sink. 
Now, one more thing, okay? Most important thing, when you pour it, can you guys see my bevel? See how there's like a small lip here, okay? It is of the utmost importance. When you pour a cylinder, you run your finger over there, okay? Your big, your big finger like this. I don't know if you guys remember. Remember that sawzall injury? See that big lump? <laughs> okay. You run your finger over there. You make sure that's like glass. And I mean shiny. I use 600 grit and I put my finger in there. And I polish it. Okay. You want all your surfaces polished. Okay. Same thing with the transfers. Otherwise you will rub big marks in that piston right away. And the first time you run your saw... I just, you know what I do, friends? You guys email me a lot, and it's awesome, and I file this stuff, and if I get the same email again and again, a lot of you guys are porting, and you're tearing up your pistons. You see the chamfer? Here, look. You see that line? You guys can see it. That line, that small little ledge there, is my chamfer, okay? That eases the rings in and out of the pit, out of the um, exhaust port, and okay, it gives you something nice to smooth. Here's our intake. We didn't do much to it. We just she's a little roughed up and uh, a little rough around the edges, but she'll do. Okay. Now these Macs have really, really wide ports. Exhaust or intake ports be aware of that that changes flow and changes what you should do to it In my opinion again friends. I'm just learning these. I'm gonna get good at these max um, we're going slow on this. This is not my saw. This is buck and saw and I I don't want to ruin a nice cylinder and this is a nice cylinder. Okay I'm gonna go wash this friends now. I wish I could run this saw today, but like I said, we're gonna build another pipe uh, I like that pipe I built, but we can do better. That was, I haven't welded in years, friends, and I'm talking years. And uh, I used to work in a muffler shop. I did custom mufflers and pipes and stuff like that. I also welded when I uh, worked on Harleys. I used to build choppers. Remember when everything was chopper, chopper, chopper on TV? Well, I was right into that back then, uh, even before it was popular, and uh, that's what I did. So, that pipe was to refresh welding for me. I've also never used that, I've also never used that uh, welder that I had, so. Really, I want to glue this down good and, and get it prepped. A little discoloration in the case here, I'm not really concerned about that. Again, I don't want to start scrubbing with uh, any heavy abrasives on this. If you deck these and you don't get these, if I took a couple thousands off this mating surface and I glued the whole assembly down, you know what happens? You put too much load on the bearings and it drags. Ask me how I know that. Again, friends, I am learning the Max. You guys that have Max, you like your Max. And uh, uh, I like them too. Interesting, the, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this here. The oil pump on a Mac is pulsed through this hole. See, and it goes to the oil pump. Again, another thing that only Macs do. As far as I know, I've never been in another saw that's anything like a Mac. So, they, they're a neat saw. And the more I work on them, the more I want to work on them. Um, when I first got into that Super Pro 70, I was like, oh my, what is this? But... No, this saw's fun. Um, we have some parts coming, finally. Uh, that's Super, or Pro Mac 800 that Mr. Ben Shelton. Hey Ben, how's it going, buddy? Um, ben Shelton sent us a Pro Mac 800 to do what we want with on the channel. Uh, I sourced some parts from my brother from another mother there down in Arkansas. Um, Dave. And uh, so those will be on the way. We're just going to keep figuring these Macs out. Okay, 
So this is prepped and cleaned. I am going to take a little scotch brain and just carefully scuff this up. Actually, I'll just I'll grab a piece out of the cupboard here. Again, you guys are too good to me. One of you guys sent me a box full of supplies, scotch braid and sandpaper and zip ties and uh, thank you. You guys, you guys are just too good to me. That's all I can say. Uh, I've never had a lot. I've never had a lot of stuff, so I, I learned to work without uh, living rural and. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. I, I make do with what I got, but you guys, you guys make this channel better than what it would be on its own, and I mean that. Thank you, everybody that hangs out here. Even if you can't afford to send something, that's okay, friends. That's not what I'm getting at. Just all you guys being here really makes this channel what it is. And uh, we're just going to keep getting better. We're going to get better video, and... Uh, have more and more fun because that's what this is about this is fun okay bottom end is prepped I got all my fasteners ready to rock and roll here same thing I want to take them all and I want them clean I'm gonna put sil silicone silicone there we go silicone sealant on these I want them clean free of oil okay lay those down in there I already did these that's the four smaller ones same thing, uh, I did scrub this out already and that's fine, I'm not, I'm not super worried about what I'm doing here. Somebody has painted this saw and the paint has come off. It's actually stained the bottom, okay. We're just cleaning this off, we want a fresh surface. This is the important stuff guys because if you don't do this prep, uh, Pay me now or pay me later, but either way you're paying me, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't mean me, it's just the saying we have here. Um, there's no cutting corners building saws. You take your time and do it properly or you'll waste three times the amount of time. Okay, so we have scrubbed this cylinder. It is shiny, a little bit of staining in the top there, no big deal. Basically the deal is I scrub the cylinders I scrub the cylinders until they come out clean and I run a rag through them. Okay, I run a rag through them and when that rag comes out as clean, piece of paper towel when I say rag, when that rag comes out clean, um, we're good to go. Okay, friends, everything is clean, shiny, blown out. Uh, we have brake cleaned. Okay. Making sure my hands are clean. A lot of times I will spray my fingertips with brake clean. Um, okay, and wipe them off. I use my finger. Uh, we got a fresh. That's what I use, guys. I've never had a failure with this. Never, ever, ever. So, not in the cold, the hot. Uh, we've gone through a tube or two of this this year. Okay, and poke the end. Okay, friends, so, uh, first thing I like to do, and again, this has all been cleaned up. I am going to put a drop of oil right here. Sorry, friends, I'm just uh, orienting myself. I want to oil these bearings up, okay? This one, anyways. One little drop in there. You don't need much. I don't want to start this thing with dry bearings, okay? Okay, just gonna wipe this down again. Okay, so we're gonna put this bottom end together or this engine together. Uh, it won't take us long. There we go, there's our moto seal. It's actually funny, the last tube of moto seal I had, it was light gray. This is dark gray, like it typically would be. Okay, I'm gonna put a nice thin layer in the bearing pocket here, okay. And another little bit here. Key is to use enough to make a layer, but not so much that it's going to get everywhere. You, you'll learn that. It, 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 it took me some time, because saws are so small, and there's so many nooks and crannies, and it's the bottom ends are really tight. It took me a while to learn just the right amount. And depending on what product you use, 
this stuff will spread out and make about a two thousandths uh, little barrier there again so if your squish is 18 and you're going for 20 you'll end up with about 21 um, once you put this on there okay I like to work quickly with this stuff and I put this stuff together and I reef it down right now um, the instructions say not to let it skin to assemble it right then and there and then I will let this dry overnight pretty much okay now the way I like to do these is I will take just a thin layer here and I will put it all the way around the bearing I don't want any leaks with this saw and this saw has a lot of places that can leak okay now I like to I like to put it to the outside of the bearing same thing with this side just a thin layer okay all the way around yes I'm standing friends I don't know what it is I like to stand while I'm working um, I'm getting wicked shots with this setup that we're using now but I like to stand I know it's it's funny I should sit but I don't okay now we got to pull this you gotta line this hole up with the little pin that's there okay now what I'm gonna do is uh, turn the little collar there we go okay now that's in there now take this same thing skim coat all the way around making sure to keep it out of the motor preferably Again, if you get a little bit inside the crankcase, it's fine, friends. It'll it'll usually still be there if you open the saw up again. If it does end up in the motor, 99% of the time, it's not going to do anything. Think of the fines that these saws eat. Um, I always think about the machine and the life it lives. Think of the sawdust that goes through a chainsaw in its life. I mean, we all worry about these things as builders, because anything you can control as a builder, you want to control, right? Because there's so many things that are out of your control. But I mean, realistically, friends, if you get a little in there, it's fine. Try not to, though. When I do anything in this world, building saws, I build a saw like somebody's going to take it apart and scrutinize my work. That's just how I am. So I like my work to be neat and tidy wherever possible. I'm going to put a little bit here. Okay. Now, what we want to do is get a little bit of oil on the cylinder. Okay. A little drop there. A little drop there. I'm going to rub it in with my finger without getting any on the ceiling flange. Okay. Just want enough oil that when we pull this saw over the first time, okay, we'll drop here on the rings, piston skirt, don't let it fall. Okay, and I rub it in, massage it in there real good, like, okay, all the way around into the rings, okay. Line the rings up with the pins. Okay. Yeah, now you just, this saw has already been run. It's got lots of hours on it. It's old, but we want to make sure that when we put it back together, that nothing ends up happening. Okay. Now these are fairly simple. The rings will start on their own and then you just shunk, down it goes. Okay. Now notice, there is a little bit of clearance when you put these saws together, it actually rocks, that's normal. You're going to cinch that down and take that right out, and that's why I was saying, if you deck one of these, make sure that you have all your bearing pocket measurements, because if you go a couple thou too much off your flange, right, which is this part, you could overload the bearings and you could blow your saw up, you know, in 15 minutes of running or whatever, right? Um, in my opinion, I think it's really good. If you are going to deck one of these, 
Um, make sure make sure you have a way to keep your pockets where they should be because uh, overloading that bearing would be a massive failure massive okay I need this one bolt out I forgot I have to goop up the flange here these are I find these can be a little messy to put together this part of it anyways I put a, a liberal dose of this underneath the bolt it's no big deal if it gets in the, the oil tank because when you tighten these down usually those rubber o-rings are gone okay I don't care moto seal comes off and it guarantees that our saw won't have a leak or at least you try okay I like to put a lot on here so just to make sure that nothing's going to leak. I hate air leaks with a passion. And if you do this stuff uh, carefully, you won't get any air leaks, okay? That's why it's like so important. I have a set of moves I use when I build an engine, any engine, and I do not vary from them. They have to be clean. I have to be in the right frame of mind. I have to have enough time to do it means no rushing and uh, that's just the deal with me okay there we go you guys can see they're all sitting down inside there now we'll take this start torquing these down by hand in a cross pattern I like Moto Seal better when it's light gray, not the dark gray. I don't know why. That last tube I had, I never had any problems with it. But when I opened it up and the color of the product was different, I was like, I don't like this. It's funny how we get set in our ways. Uh, I noticed guys use in the comments use Durco 1194, and they everybody says the same thing. This is what I use and it works. I say, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you use, if it works, why would you change? I wouldn't change either. I've been using Moto Seal since I've been doing saws. The reason why I use Moto Seal is I can buy it locally at good old Canadian Tire. And uh, so anytime I need it, and I do go through a decent amount of this stuff in this shop. I mean, this tube will last me for a while, but um, I can just go and get it. Now, if you guys can see here, you see? See how we have that nice ring of moto seal in there. I'll go in there, that those few little globs that are in there. Again, when I build a saw, it's like I feel like somebody's gonna be like, oh, look at the mess here. You got moto seal. That's just how I am. It's a fault. Um it is, but it's just how I am, so <laughs> bear with me here. I like everything to be clean. Okay, we'll tighten this down. These are going nowhere. Okay, wipe this down. There you go. Now, another thing I like to do, and again, because of just the way I am, I like to wipe all the excess moto seal off. Notice it's squirted out all the way around the periphery of the flange. Okay, look, you know you've done a good job when it's squirting out all the way around the bearing. For me, that's like, I know that I put the right amount. You got just enough that it pushes out, but not so much that it's like, you know, globbing out everywhere. Okay? Globbing, blobbing, whatever we want to call it. Same thing on this side. Okay? I don't know. I, I enjoy building saws, and I like them to look as good as they can when they're done. I don't like them too clean, though, like uh, paint-wise and that. Um... Uh, I like a saw, I like a saw that's, you know, there you go, feels good, lots of compression, now we will just let this dry for the next few days, and uh, we got a motor, this is, this is the first step to Macaulay greatness. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or McCall a failure. Let's be honest here, friends. Now, there are more bolts right here. One here. One there. And then there's one really long one that goes here. You guys can see. Right here. And here. These will be the final ones I put in. I'm just going to grab the appropriate size... I think it's a wrench I use for these. I cannot get a socket on one of them. There's one that's too tight for any socket that I own. I believe these are quarter inch. Yes, they are. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait to try this saw now. Socket quarter inch, not nine thirty seconds. I grabbed the nine thirty seconds there. It's cool. Someone did a nice repair on the case. They built it back up and drilled and tapped it. That's cool. Okay, since he's down, I guess I can fit a socket on here. I don't know what I was talking about, friends. No idea. The more I know, the less I know, right? There we go. The columns take a little bit longer to put together, but they're worth it in my thought pattern. They're, they're a lot of fun, and they are just a totally different saw. They get my brain going. They are harder to work on, they are harder to port. Those of you that build McCullough's know what I'm talking about. Okay. Beauty. Okay friends, well there is a McCullough engine assembly, nut and bolt, shot for shot. Um, that's the porting we did. 99 on the exhaust. We have 15 degrees of blowdown and the intake opens at 131 right now we're gonna try it like this i have other little go fast moves that i'm gonna do to this thing as i go along we're gonna build this in stages and see what happens it might be good like this and if it is i'll send it to buck and if it's not i'm gonna pick this saw apart because i do that with my work every saw i build i'm already thinking of the next build and how i can make it better when i'm done Listen to that, friends. These things change directions violently. Anyhow, friends, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me, tinmansaws at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.